Um, all right. So the first thing I did was to put on the band. And dude, the mechanism for putting on a band is awesome. It makes it fun, doesn't it? Like, I, it makes well, it. Well, I'm just like, you know what? I think I could figure this out. And I just snapped it in and it just, you know, clicked. And it's like, and, and then I put it on. The fit is perfect. It's actually better than my other watch. Um, Amazing. Yeah, it makes it makes having multiple bands easy and fun, which is something I never yeah. would do with my other watches. Now, yeah. here, here the the interesting part is, as with many toys, if you have to force something, don't do it. Because I was like, oh, how how do I remove it? <laughs> oh. I actually had to I actually had to research this online. So there's a, there are little buttons on the watch that are used to release the band. Yeah. So don't force it. Never force anything. If if it doesn't move and it should, then you're doing something wrong. Probably. You're doing it wrong. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So the setup was real easy. Um, you know the watch. It, it, it's like a lot of other things. Uh, but, so it came up and it said, "Yeah, you, you uh, put a phone near me." I'm like, "Okay." And once it noticed that there was a phone near it, it then put uh, you know the sparkly pattern on the watch which i guess is getting the you know wi-fi or bluetooth or, or some some credentials and yes. and then there it goes all right so um, I, now that you've got it set up you're using it what like what are some of the pros and pro and con like what are some of the things you've noticed about wearing a watch because for so many of us you know, we've had watches for years mm -hmm. and, and there are like, there's probably some things that, that we've learned along the way that are helpful for you. But I, I feel like you sort of stepping into this with beginner's mind with fresh eyes, you're going to notice some things that the rest of us overlook. Um, the one thing that I thought was kind of weird. So, so the first thing that I wanted to try was, um, so yeah, I went out and about and just used it as as a watch. Um, sure. But here's the first thing I tried. So this watch can measure your heart rate. It can do a EKG uh, or ECG or ECG, yeah. right? Um, yeah. and oxygen level in your blood. And I'm like, oh, cool. I'm like, okay. Um, well, let let me run the apps to do that. And so I look on the watch. Um learning how to do an app view is to press the button, not the crown. Um, and I'm like, where, where, where's the app for this? And it's like, oh, well, you know, you, uh, I then looked online for guidance, so I couldn't figure it out. And they're like, oh yeah, you may want to get the, uh, the watch app. <laughs> so you needed to install the O2 sensor app from Apple. It didn't just come on the watch. No, no. Uh, the, the app, um, none of the apps appeared. I had to run something on my phone, uh, in order to enable the app to appear on the watch. So that huh. was kind of weird. It is weird. Yeah. Uh, but they all work, you know, it's, it, it's really good. Uh, the, the other reflection is that it didn't come with a bunch of watch faces and and it looks like what's happening is that the phone over time populates certain data on the watch without really telling you that it's doing it yes that was going to be one piece of advice i had for you was um i i find it maddening uh that when i go into i also find it maddening that updating to ios 16.1 on my iphone removed or defaulted to the show only four suggestions when you search instead of the, the show more, which is show eight. So um, I just had to turn that on because I just updated to 16.1. But if you go into the watch app uh, and I believe you go, yes. So go to the watch app and go to general mm -hmm. automatic app install is I believe on by default. And quite frankly, I can't deal with my watch being super cluttered with apps that I'm never going to use on my watch. So I have that turned off now and, and it always drives me crazy when it winds up getting turned back on. So that that's one piece of advice. Again, we're all different humans. Some of you may love having automatic app install and I get it. I install too many things on my phone 
for that to be a realistic world to live in. If I want something on my watch, I'll, I'll happily just, you know, tell it to put it there. And you would do that then by going into settings. Uh, and I believe it's, yeah, if it just scroll down to the watch or go into the Apple watch app and scroll down to the bottom and you'll see the apps that are on your watch that you can remove and the apps that aren't on your watch that you can install. So, yeah. Um, anyway, the other thing, um, that I learned is that I want fewer notifications. <laughs> yes. It's like, for example, yes. running on my computer, I, I get a, so I have Apple news, so I'll get Apple news alerts, but then it also sent that alert to the, the, uh, the watch. Yeah. Uh, to me, that's too annoying. I don't okay. need to know that piece of information on the yep. watch. Yep. <laughs> yep. So did you just go into to watch on your phone, watch and the the watch app and then notifications and then just go mm -hmm. set individual yeah, because it'll mirror yeah. alerts from your phone by default for everything and you can start to turn those off mm -hmm. if you yeah. Okay. So you just like turned it off for news or whatever, is mm -hmm. that right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, good stuff. Um I had to uh and then what I usually do with my phone, so I decided to try this when I was out and about. So one nice thing is that it um, it transferred over one app that I used called StowCard, which lets you store your your uh, uh, loyalty cards. Okay. Sure. And will display the barcode. And I'm like, you know what? Let me see if I can use my watch to uh, to both let them scan uh, for stores that, that scan it, like our grocery store. Uh, let me do that. Um, let me display the barcode and then do Apple Pay with the watch. And that worked great too. Um, I had to go through the setup process with the watch in that, you know, you had, I had to enter the uh, CCV for all my cards over again. And I was yes. like, what a pain in the neck. Yes. Ah, yes. I'm sorry. Here's the other thing I noticed. The wallet initially, yeah. So, so this is the thing that stuck in my mind about transferring over stuff. When I added my cards to the wallet, and then I went to the wallet on the on the watch, only my cards were there. I'm like, well, well where's my other stuff? <laughs> oh, right. Eventually, it transferred it over. Um, yeah, so that I was will... kind of weird too. Is uh, uh, again things. Things are starting to appear on the watch that weren't there when I initially set it up. They're also coming to take you away, haha. -ha. Uh, the no, uh, although the fire it, I know, yeah, based on how it's been today, I think they're coming to take me away. Uh, <laughs> one one thing to be aware of is that when you put your cards on your watch, the same as when you put them on your phone, uh, they get a different number. So, you know, there's the number that's on your card and then the one that's on your phone that your phone advertises to like, you know, kiosks is a different number, but still yours. And the one on your watch is yet another different number. And where this gets to be very important is um, if you are doing something where you are being sort of tracked, uh, hopefully intentionally and, and with permission, uh, for your purchases and where it mattered for us was when we visited London. And I, and I think New York will do the same thing when you're using the subways there or in London, of course, called the tube. Uh, you get a discount if you ride, if you're based upon the frequency with which you ride, but that discount is applied specifically to your credit card number. So if you're going back and forth using your watch and your phone, you you will you will qualify separately from each device for that discount uh, is really how it's done. Uh, so and New York probably does the same thing because there's no account that you create. You just um, tap your phone and you go. Yes, there is actually. OK, you can get an account for their payment system. Got it. And does that does it? Know? And actually, when I did that, it then showed what cards I had used recently. Mm. All right. Like it had it had my Amex in there, which is the card that I have set up as my travel card, and, how, and it showed up. How? So yeah. Did, so you could get a uh, is it O M N Y? 
Okay. All right. So just be aware. There might be some places where it matters. It seems but, like but, in the New but, York subway. But you are right because um, it depends on the credit card vendor. So, for example, I bought something with my watch on my city card or on one of my city cards. Okay. Um, when I looked on my phone, the transaction did not appear there. But when I bought something using my watch and my Amex, it did appear on the phone. So I, I, I think it's it's really up to the bank. Yeah. The bank, how they hand if if they it, it was just funny that it didn't see that the watch app or, or the the uh, iOS app didn't see the transaction uh, for one card, but it did for another. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So just be aware but, that that numbers are different. Um, it may or may not matter. Um, and the other, yeah, and and the other thing I learned, uh, and it was funny because one one of the stores I went to, I tried using my watch to pay, and she's like, oh, "Do it face down." <laughs> that helped. Yes, yeah, you, yeah. You have to twist your wrist. I will recommend not using your watch for boarding passes uh, when when getting on airplanes. Mm -hmm. It like it has not been the it's been a disaster every time. It's like, you know, you, you've got to hold your wrist at a weird angle or it needs to be at certain distance from the camera that's scanning it. And it's just, it's still much easier to use my phone when getting on airplanes. So I'll 